joins us now, and Glenn, congratulations on an outstanding series. You mentioned a second ago it's scary when they play that well. Well, I'm very proud of the hockey club. I'm sure everyone in Edmonton is. They've worked hard to get to where they're at right now, and we've still got a ways to go yet uh, until we're going to be satisfied. But I think tonight we're going to enjoy it, and uh, when they skate and move the puck and play like they're capable of playing, they're fun to watch, and it's really fun to be around them. I know you want to savor the victory, uh, but did you really think that uh, your team would be as dominant as they showed in the series with the Calgary Flames? I don't know. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's a hard thing to say how anything's going to happen. You know, it, there are one or two little incidents in a series can turn the whole thing from one direction to the other. And uh, we got great goaltending. Our penalty killers worked hard. Calgary's had a tremendous uh, power play against us all year long, and we've had a lot of trouble with them. But I think uh, John Muckler and Teddy Green really spent a lot of time going over the films and came up with some good solutions that we were able to capitalize on in the last you know, week. And really, we studied them pretty hard. And uh, John and Teddy did a pretty good job because they're really the guys that devised the methods to stop that club in the power play. And uh, I didn't think that we would be able to do what we did to them in Calgary. You know, the 10-2 hockey game was, it's uh, hard to stop our team when they get rolling. And when you do lay back and wait for us, I think you're going to get in trouble. Defense was criticized on the Edmonton Oilers uh, several times during the season as far as giving up too many goals at, at the wrong time. And, and I thought in the playoffs and, and going into the playoff stretch, the defense really came together. Well, I, th I think it's more than just the defense. You can't criticize the six, seven defensemen that we have. And uh, they work hard. A lot of times they'll have their man in the corner in front of the net and there's a loose guy that ends up scoring the goal. But uh, we're an offensive hockey team and that's where our strength is. And, We've tightened up defensively. We're getting great goaltending. And uh, the team has to be considered as the five guys that are on the ice when you're talking about defense. It's a unit job, not just the two defensemen. And if, if we get goals scored against us, you can't blame the two defensemen. And it's hard to, in, it's, it's hard to make some people in the media believe that. But our team plays with five up and five back when we're doing it right. And when we do that, it works right. As the Oilers' uh, offensive power going into the series, you got a lot of goals from uh, a lot of unlikely scorers through uh, five games with Calgary. I think that they're really the people that are going to win this thing for us. Uh, the people who work hard every day and do the extra things like Hunter and Hughes, they've really played outstanding. And Cote has is, is certainly been terrific for us. But uh, even the people that aren't playing right now, if something happens, these are the guys that you have to rely on. If you don't have the depth, you don't have any chance to win in this. It's, it's a tough, tough road to hoe. And, some of our guys have never been through it, and they're just learning what it is like now to, to play five games and four nights under this kind of pressure and stress. It takes a lot out of the guys, but they seem very happy and excited. And the one thing that we do have on our side is a lot of youth. What about stress on the coaching staff? Uh, your series in the playoffs. I've kind of always enjoyed pressure. I, I, uh, I don't mind it, although I had a headache all day today, and I kept telling the trainers it's because I've had a cold, and one of them <laughs> said it was because of the pressure, but. Uh, maybe it is, and I just don't know it. But I, th I think that the coaching staff has been through it. All of us have been around for a while, although Teddy and John are a lot older than I am. <laughs> but uh, I don't know whether you, it really bothers you. I know I, I get excited for the games and inspire, and I'm up for all the hockey games, but I'm up for those in the, you know, the regular season, too. So, A couple of words about uh, a couple of players who did exceptionally well for the Edmonton Oilers. I think of Ken Lensman, and I think back to the fourth game. Kenny, uh, Kenny is, uh, I mean, he's really a unique person. He's bright, he's intelligent, he works hard, and he's the kind of guy that if, if things aren't going well on the hockey team, we're, we're not playing that well, he's the guy that is able to ignite us. And if you remember the series against Winnipeg and we were down, he was the guy that really put it all together for us. He just got things rolling. And uh, Wayne is, I guess, the main person in our hockey club that we rely an awful lot on. but. It's starting to be distributed a little bit. Messier and Anderson and Curry and all these guys, they all work hard and do their own job. And probably the biggest thing about them is none of them complain about each other. You know, I've never heard a guy on our team complain about Wayne getting 30 minutes of ice time or playing on the power play or you know, Hunter and Hughes killing penalties. Nobody ever complains. And the, the biggest thing that we have, I think, is they work hard as a team and they help each other and Lindsman is just one of the guys that puts it together if somebody isn't doing it that night. Okay, Glenn, thank you very much. Continued success as the playoffs continue for the Edmonton Oilers. The Calgary Flames not as fortunate tonight. Gary Dornhofer is outside the Flames dressing room.
way, you know. I, I, I put all the full gears. I gave it 100%, and uh, uh, 99 games later, I, uh, I certainly uh, feel that I, you know, I, I gave it an honest shot, and that's all you can do, and, and, a, and a good shot. Uh, Bob, the intensity of uh, players in a playoff, um, you know, it seemed that the Oilers really had it, and at times the Flames had it, but not on a consistent basis. It, and that seems to be very important in playoff competition. Yeah, but tonight, uh, surprisingly, you know, and I had the best view on the ice, uh, uh, we had good intensity tonight, uh, Gary. We, we, we had good intensity, and there was a solid effort there, you know. Uh, before the game, uh, uh, we had a good uh, workout this morning. We had a good meeting, and the guys wanted to go out, uh, you know, lifting their heads high, and, uh, you know, the effort was there, and the execution wasn't. Uh, they executed on their chances. We didn't, and uh, maybe because they're better offensive players than we are, or, or uh, Andy Moog stopped us offensively. But uh, uh, you're right. Uh, uh, but they, they, they've got an outstanding hockey club, and I give them 100% uh, credit that the, they certainly had the best team, and they certainly deserve the win. If you get beat, you like to know you got beat by the champions. Do you believe the Oilers? Well, they, they, yes, I think they can win it. Uh, you know, the question you always ask, uh, uh, you know, how will they react when they're behind? You, you don't know. We got, we got ahead of them once and we beat them, you know, and uh, when they get into a real uh, um, a tight checking game, uh, they, but th they'll find themselves uh, because of the two offensive lines they have, uh, they're certainly going to get a lot of opportunities. You know, there's a reason why they finished second in the league, and there's a reason why they led the league in goal scoring the last two years, and it was obvious that again tonight they can score goals. And when the opportunities present themselves, they're going to they're going to score goals. They're going to get opportunities, and they're going to score. And someone's got to uh, outscore them, or someone's got to come up and, and shut them down. And you to do that, you, you know, you, you need a, you need the outstanding goaltending. This is Bob Johnson do all summer. For Bob Johnson outside the Calgary Flames dressing room after bowing out of the Smythe Division final to the Edmonton Oilers. Four games to one, nine to one tonight. Howie, uh, you were looking at unsung heroes when I was talking to Glenn Sather there, so who else have you picked well, out? Well, I guess team? one of the unsung heroes in this organization, I maybe is highly sung of, but Scout Barry Fraser, he's come up with his Ray Cody. You know, you've got Gretzky, you've got Lindsman, you've got Ralston coming over the mountain, and then all of a sudden they reach down on the farm team and they bring up this kid Cody and he's a good puck handler, good playmaker, but three or four times tonight he has tremendous speed and if they come up with another guy that can fly, Edmonton are just going to be unbeatable. Defensively, I thought a couple of players came to the floor for Edmonton, Don Jackson and Randy Gregg. Now, two unlikely playoff heroes there, but both got a couple of goals in this series. I don't know whether you could say unlikely playoff heroes because they possibly have been their most solid defense pair from a, a plus minus point of view all year long. Uh, they never get you in, in, into any trouble. They go back into the corners and take the man, get their stick on the puck, move the puck fast, and they don't go to the attack too often, yet the Edmonton Oilers score all kinds of goals. But tonight, both of them were moving into the slot created by the openings of, of uh, Cote and Ralston and getting the shots on the net, and they were going in. They're two pretty good hockey players, but particularly Randy Gregg, just his, his mind is one step ahead of everything that goes on in the ice. He's another guy that, you know, carries his brains two feet ahead of his feet. We eliminate some of the uh, very definite stars in the Edmonton Oilers. Who would be, uh, say, your top three players as far as the Oilers were concerned in this playoff series? Let's eliminate Gretzky and Messier and, uh, and find three guys in there. Well, I got to go with Moog. Uh, there's no doubt about that. I was just so impressed with the way he played tonight. It, my mind went back two years ago when he stood the Canadians on the rear. Uh, Foglin, uh, Jackson, Greg, and... Uh, uh, Hunter and Hughes, they're the five guys that I just think play tremendous hockey, and they're the bread and butter guys, and they're usually the fellows that win a series. Andy Moog was not spectacular through the entire series, but very steady. I mean, with spectacular saves, but he wasn't a spectacular net miner. He, he wasn't forced to, maybe. No, he made key saves, though. When the outcome of the game was in doubt, he was solid as um, gold in the bank. Defensively for the Oilers, there was criticism uh, many stages this season as uh, the Oilers whipped through the Smythe Division, finished second overall in the National Hockey League standings. Glenn Sather pointed to the fact that it was possibly uh, not as much the defense as the uh, checkers coming back. Well, there's no doubt about that. Anybody who's ever played the game, they say we got bad goaltending. Well, uh, two good defensemen helped the goaltending, and we got our goaltenders or, or our defensemen are come see, come saw. You know, it's. 
they can't play defense without the forwards coming back, and it's system and it's discipline and it's hard work behind the blue line. The coach is totally responsible for, for what goes on behind the blue line. The general manager, I say, is totally responsible for what goes on <laughs> in the rest of the rink by supplying speedsters and skaters and scorers. But certainly, it, it's as uh, Mr. Sather said a few moments ago, it's a defense is a five-man unit, and every person is responsible for it being successful. If it breaks down, it's pretty hard to point the, goal, the finger at the goalie, perhaps if a shot from the blue line went between his legs, mm -hmm. yes. But certainly up until then, there had been one, two, or three chances in the offensive end of the rink or the defensive end of the rink to stop that shot on net, and somebody didn't do what they were supposed to do. Simple, basic fundamentals. Calgary Flames uh, really had their problems in this series. Only uh, one victory, and, and that was very close as far as the Flames were concerned. A 6-5 win over the Oilers in Game 4. But uh, have you got a word for the Calgary Flames? What do they need for next year? Do they need a uh, little more speed to compete in this might division? I would think, and particularly down center. They have, uh, and they need some goal scoring on the wings. But certainly they need speed down center. Uh, they're, they're tough center. They're hard-working centers. Uh, they're durable centers, but they're not speed centers. And the second that you're matched against the club with all the foot that Calgary has, and many other teams in the National Hockey League have, then you need speed. You need speed somewhere on that team. And they're just, their biggest problem, I think, is this lack of foot. Too much blazing power for the Edmonton Oilers against the Calgary Flames in this series. A little bit more, here's Gary Dornhoff. Thank you, John, and well, partner, the, yeah. the series is over. An awesome display by the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, your comments on the series. Well, before the series started, most people who made predictions said the Edmonton Oilers would defeat the Calgary Flames. Most people said it would go five games. Some said six, most said five, and it went five. But I think the surprise is the scores in two of the games were 10 to 2 and 9 to 1. I think Calgary had to hang on to the Oilers, keep them closer, get great goaltending, hang in there, and, and try and have low-scoring games. Once the Oilers got the early lead, got all that speed, all that offensive talent, that's what happened, 10 2 and 9 1. Jim, uh, you did the series with the Flames and the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, the Flames played excellent hockey uh, when the occasion arose to play physical hockey they were able to do it you think speed had that much difference to do the way the flames played against Vancouver and the Edmonton Oilers a big contrast no question about it Vancouver does not have a lot of speed and their fastest skater Gradeen was uh, laboring in the series with an injury and the contrast of going from that grinding hitting kind of series with all the games were close low scoring two overtime one one in the last minute such a contrast and I think it took Calgary quite a while to adjust to the change to the speed of the Oilers and by the time they came close to adjusting it was far too late. Well all year people have been saying and the so-called experts have been saying that the Oilers do not know how to play good defense. Well I think Andy Moog tonight demonstrated that he knows how to stop pucks and also behind the blue line the uh, Oilers have an excellent defensive hockey club. Well they have the puck most of the time so <laughs> it doesn't really matter they talk about their goals against but they are the kind of a team that I always feel they can score more than the other team they've been able to do it all year but I'm looking forward to the next round. I think it's going to be a great series with Chicago. Well, Jim, I know we're working together. Uh, the game's in Edmonton. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, we'll watch as the Blackhawks try to dethrone the Edmonton Oilers. Back to you, John Wells. Okay, Gary.